I did that almost my dual career for most of my life. And uh, you were talking about equipment. You never know. You check it out at home. Yeah. That's one gig we did one time. Everything's fine. I we got to the gig, turned the amp on, in the middle of like the first song, the amp set on fire. <laughs> wow. I mean, so yeah, you never know. Thankfully, thankfully, the equipment hasn't set on fire just yet. But, uh, you know, yeah, the, the day's still young, you know? Yeah, the transformer blew up in the amp. There are flames coming out of the amp. Oh, that is insane, dude. Uh, what, uh, what kind of music do you play? I'm an American Roots music specialist. Yeah, I used to do. I used to do. I used to, I'm a composer as well. I used to do movie soundtracks. I was also a studio guitar player. Uh, the really? guitar on everybody's tracks. That's awesome, man. Uh, for those that we're just going to go ahead and start the interview. Yeah, this that's is how cool. I actually like to do interviews. Yeah, I yeah. love to just have a natural yeah, conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Natural conversation. Nobody likes to be, you know, uh, interrogated. So I, it's, it's better. It's better just to have a natural conversation. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my audience, this is Arthur Sudan. Uh, back in 2008. He was gracious enough to uh, give me an interview, and um, I figured, well, why not kick off Megacon 2023 and doing this for the first time in 15 years with the man, the myth, and the legend. How you doing today, sir? I'm good, man. Good to see you again. Thank you. It's, been a, you well. it's yeah. been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. Just a wee while. <laughs> uh, so what kind of guitar do you play, man? What, what was, what's your favorite uh, favorite axe? Um, I'm a stra I'm a... I'm a Jeff Beck style player. So I'm a whammy bar player, yeah. uh, Fender Stratocaster. I've owned everything, but that was my, that was my main gig that I like to play. Nice. Uh, and what's uh, what's your favorite song to uh, to play? Like your favorite, I guess, warm up tune. Uh, well, warm up, I just do exercise. Okay. I do I do jazz exercises to gotcha. warm up. But my specialty that I play, I'm an American Roots music player, so I play uh, rockabilly. is my specialty. Oh, I love rockabilly. Rockabilly. Nice. Uh, Cajun music and Zydeco music and the Chicago blues and that kind of All stuff. All right, so yeah. some, some fun, uh, some pop, fun, fun All American, stuff. American yeah. Uh, yeah. roots stuff. Stuff yeah. you can uh, stomp your feet to and clap hopefully, your hands hopefully, to. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah. hopefully, yeah. man. When done uh, right, when, when done right. When done right, yeah, that's, that's very true. Uh, so how did you get into uh, doing artwork? Uh, went from music to art? Well, my family is an art and music family. Yeah. So uh, my relatives go all the way back to 16th century. Um, wow. I had some great uncles who were, two great uncles who were uh, members of the uh, Hudson River Painters. They were the uh, group of American painters that won American Fine Artists recognition for the first time worldwide at, wow. at the advent of the Civil War. One was James Sudam, one was Henry Sudam. Then later on in the early t uh, 20th century, America's foremost architectural artist was E.A. Sudam. So I'm like the latest today, yeah. but I'm the zombie guy. You're the zombie guy, hey. Carrying on the tradition and you know, with, with modern mythology. Yeah. yeah. You know? I, I love this cover. This is uh, this is uh, Batman vs. Predator 2, yep. right? Right there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Love it, man. That was, uh, that was a great book. Uh, uh, I remember it blew my, blew my tiny little Yeah, it was good I, stuff. It was good stuff. They don't Batman. make comics like that anymore, man. You know? It's... Uh, it's it, well, that was a crossover, which is probably why it was good. Yeah. And why it was good in my book is because it wasn't DC. It was a, a crossover between DC and Dark Horse. Yeah. And Dark Horse had the good writers. Yeah. DC had oh, no man. good writers. Dark Horse yeah. had the good writers. The uh, the Predator comics, the uh, the Terminator comics, the uh, the Alien comics back in back in the day. From, yep. Uh, yeah. They had uh, good writing, man. The mask, yeah. that writing on the mask book, oh, that was good. Oh, yeah, uh, Doug Mangy, right? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, Doug does great work. He's in the know. Yeah, yeah, no, I've been doing this for a little bit. You know? I've been, uh, been keeping an eye on it. I actually yeah. used to work in my LCS uh, over okay. the last, like, seven years. Uh, got right. sold. Right. So uh, now I'm going back to doing this. Very cool, you know? very cool, um, man. Right. Watch the watch things can change just a little bit. So uh, I haven't been to Megacon in at least a decade. Yeah. Uh, 2013 was the last time I was actually at the show, but uh, 20, 2008 was actually the last one that I uh, I did interviews. Okay. How has the show changed for you, Curtis? Oh, let me think about that. Uh, the only thing I could think about it is that, uh, you know, now it's owned by a big company. Oh, okay. And before it was owned by two sisters. So it was uh, Beth and her sister. So that we call them the two sisters. Yeah. And uh, so it was a lot more, uh, you know, when it's owned by 
like a family, basically. Right. You know, they, 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 they treat you more like you're a member, member of a family, that kind of gotcha. thing. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so a little, it's a lot more, more mom and pop. Part. It's yeah. mom and pop. Okay. Yeah, so it was mom you. and pop, and now it's more corporate, we'll say. Well, I, I did notice walking in that they, they have it in the big, big hall this time, and there's a lot more space. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, uh, there's a lot here. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty crazy to see. It's a huge space. Yeah, yeah it yeah. really is. Yeah. It really is. The, uh, the last time I came here, I think it was uh, the other hall, the, the south. Okay. The west you know hall. better than me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, how many shows a year do you do now? Well, before the pandemic, uh, that's my agent over there, uh, we were booked every weekend. Oh, wow. So I think I had two weekends off the entire year. Yeah. So uh, since then, it's... Um, Probably do about two thirds of the year. I'm yeah. booked at a show somewhere. Yeah, so I do a lot. I do a lot. Yeah. Constantly on the road. Constantly on the road. Yeah. I mean, you know, when the COVID thing happened and everybody had to stay home, mm-hmm. I got to do a lot of a lot more work for the publishers. Yeah. Because I was home and I had time to work on it. So I think sure. I did over 35 covers for Dynamite just that year, nice. and uh, and I liked it. So I was like, oh yeah, I, I'm enjoying like mixing it up. Yeah. There's such a thing as too many shows. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, and I yeah. learned that. Burn yourself out after a little while. Yeah, the traveling. It's, it's the, yeah, that, it's the, the traffic. The, 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 the getting stuck in airport thing. That's what it is. Oh, it's okay, like so it's, doing planes. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like getting your flight getting rained out, and with the whole pandemic thing, sure. all these. Uh, if you weren't vaxxed, they won't let you. Uh, they won't let us get on a plane, but they won't let the pilots or the uh, the attendants, the flight attendants, yep. work. So that created huge problems for the airlines where we're not we can't your flight got canceled because yeah. we don't have any uh airline stores to, to attend, don't the have to attend the flight yeah to attend the flight yeah yeah, yeah. wow uh did you did you consider like driving to different shows or is that just I'm not on a car oh okay so i'm new york i'm new york ah, city okay. okay i'm new york city so i drive the subway yeah i mean hey you know it, it seems kind of impractical to have a car if you live in it is city. it's like it's fool's play, fool's play, man. Seriously, I mean, yeah, yeah. talk about gridlock. Yeah. Uh, so if you could do, like, uh, your own project, would you yeah. Would you do, like, a creator-owned project? I know that you had, had one back in the day. From I've done a bunch of them. Yeah. So I've done a bunch of them. Um, I like them. I mean, I did the Charlie Flytrap yeah. series, and I did Mudbog oh, series before that. But both, mostly those were uh, projects that I did, you know, chapter by chapter for one of the anthology magazines right for heavy metal magazine and then for epic illustrated yeah. Mar- marvel's epic illustrated i remember that and um those magazines don't exist anymore no they do not if they existed i'd still be doing that because okay. i like i like doing that yeah, yeah, yeah have you ever thought about uh, crowdfunding a book no nah. no nah? i don't know anything about it it's not i don't it's not my area of, of knowledge you know uh, uh, yeah. i mean it, it does take it it does take a lot of research. Okay. But, uh, you know, taking uh, if you, you know, letting your audience know that you have something. Yeah. And uh, putting together a book, having a bunch of pictures. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, it can be done. I well, mean, we're working on we're working on getting the we put out the complete. Well, we didn't put it out, but Titan Books put out the complete John and Fly Trap. Yeah. I think it was like 300 pages of John and Fly Trap. And uh, we're working on getting the complete Mudwogs out now. Uh, I have to finish it, so I've right. still got like probably 30 pages to draw and and. Uh, and then I have to write the whole second chapter. Right. I've got the artwork for two thirds of it. I have to write the finished script for it, and then we'll try to get that out. Um, I also have a Conan project. Oh, that, uh, yeah. Nice. Right, when, uh, when when can we expect to hear something about that? That I don't know. I'm scratching my head about that because because the owners of the license keeps keeps changing. It's true. It's very true. Yeah, I was like Marvel had it. We were gonna work on it. Then Marvel got it. We're like. Uh, yeah. You know, and then, uh, so, I don't even know who's got the license now, so, well, kind of, I a know. similar thing happened to us with the, I did a, I did a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, miniseries as yeah. well, that never got published, because really? we got halfway through it, and then the company went out of business, you know, so, okay, and coincidentally, huh. it was a zombie thing. It was really? And zombie it started stuff. before all the zombies. Before like, all the, the maybe twenty years before the zombie stuff. Wow. So I still had that at home. Yeah. Put it aside because the company went out of business. Um, right. And then uh, when Penthouse Comics opened up, yeah. They bought it, and uh, so they said, Arthur, can you go back to working on it because we're going to publish it. Okay. So I, I went back to working on it. Awesome. And then they went out of business. <laughs> I got like three quarters of the way, so I've got like another 
quarter of the way to go to right. finish that up. But then it's another. Uh, uh, I've been. I've been. Uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to get together with Kevin at some point yeah, and man. figure out a strategy for getting this thing out because it's real good. It's very, very, very good. I mean, with the success that they've had with the last round in. And yeah. like doing the, 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 the next uh, last round and second last round book. I mean, it seems kind of like a natural progression. Like now, what company is that that's publishing that? Uh, IDW was putting out uh, the last round. All right, maybe I'll, maybe I'll talk but, to him about yeah, it. Yeah, Kevin, uh, Kevin Eastman uh, is actually right. Right. That, right. You know? And uh, he drew it too, didn't he? He did some covers for it. I don't know if he's oh, he didn't do the interiors? interiors? Okay. No. All right. I don't think he's doing the interiors. Maybe, maybe it's Spot. Um, okay. This didn't look like his one. Right? All right. So, okay. But yeah. Um, so maybe that'll be an opportunity. Yeah. IDW, I'll uh, maybe talk to them and, and, and about like finishing this up. The one that I did is, um, you know, it's uh, it had to be R-rated, yeah. so it's for adults. I didn't know kids stuff. Yeah, I mean, uh, last Ronin, that's that's very very adult. You know, I, I, that's how this one. This yeah, is kind this of is kind hardcore. Of what IDW was pushing for. You know, DC did their whole black label thing. With yeah. Super yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just kind of like their attempt to do something like that. Okay. So, so yeah, I mean, hey, it's worth a shot. Don't know if much ask, the, right? The thing with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I was thinking, you know, you know, it was created, uh, it, was, uh, it was created kind of gritty. Yeah. You know, Kevin was writing it and doing it. And then at some point, was it Nickelodeon or somebody bought oh, yeah. it? And then it became for like little kids. And I was like, well, the yeah. thing that I worked on is never going to, they're never going to let this come out. Yeah. Because now you got like six-year-olds and seven-year-olds who are, that's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles crowd, yeah. and my stuff is adult. You know? Yeah, uh, I mean, you just title it something else, like, yeah. you know, Dead Ronin or something uh, like that. Something, but yeah. but, but you may put a stamp on it, mature, or yeah. something, you know. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. you gotta just, you just let people know. Just yeah, let people know. okay, yeah. Well, Arthur, you got, you got a crowd here. I thank you so much for your time. Brother, sir. always, always a pleasure. And uh, I will uh, see you guys on the next video. Take care, man.